In this latest video, join me and my friend John as we explore a 1940s heavy fuel pump house. Abandoned for 50 years and incredibly well preserved, the pumps in this building once provided oil to the Royal Navy as they battled the German fleet and dodged U-boat wolf packs. John got us permission to be here and will be keeping some details secret to preserve the integrity of the site. Sit back and join us on this special tour. Hello and welcome back to another video. This time I'm in a pumping station. Now I'm not going to divulge where this is, not even what part of the country, but all I can say is it was constructed in the 1940s as part of the Second World War effort and was used for three decades after that. Doors were shut and it has been abandoned ever since, only for, as you can see, the pigeons to take over. So this is quite an incredible place. Um, we've been, we have been given permission to come in here, but only under very certain conditions, which I'm not sure if making this video meets. So yeah, I'm keeping things reasonably quiet. So in the centre here, we can see the stars of the show, which are these two very large diesel fuel pumps. 14 inch steel pipes carrying the heavy fuel oil to support the war effort. Pumped by these beautiful diesel engines. Admittedly, there's 50 years of decay and deter deterioration, but the oil is still, still as fresh as the day it came out of the can. And as I say, it really is quite a remarkable place. So in this video we'll go around, we'll have a look at some of the some of the details that are left. So if we come up to the to the entrance of this pump house. We met with this really incredible nineteen forties era control panel. So this seemed to provide and control the electricity supply to the pump house itself. So a couple of these large handle switches, still remarkably work and actuate. Unfortunately, at some stage, uh, we're led to believe in the 90s, some vandals got into this pump house and for some unknown reason, destroyed and smashed um, the glass on these panels. As usual with vandalism, nobody quite knows why. Uh, this is Crompton Parkinson uh, manufacture in Chelmsford, England. And really, it's still in a, a fantastic state of preservation. So here we have a synchroscope. Unfortunately, I don't know what a synchroscope is, but there we can see manufactured 1940. Power factor meters, lag, leave, three phase. Three phase unbalanced load power factor meter. So, whether this was to try and balance electricity or power that was being generated um, nearby or to try and match the phase 
um, if the power supply was, was unreliable. So here we have two more diesel engines, this time with alternators for the generation of electricity. Crank handle starts, drip trays, oil still in the reservoirs. Ruston and Hornby revs per minute rev meter. It really is just a different era of engineering. And the fact that this has been here for 80 years, working for for more than half of that. And what really is quite remarkable are the spares. So there are a number of cabinets around this facility. So there we have Lancashire Dynamo and Crypto Limited, dated 1940, for a rust and four-cylinder oil engine. Moving away from the dynamos and now looking at, at one of these one of these oil pumps. So the, the fuel oil in the in the silver pipes with a cutter valve here. This is the pump unit straight in front of us. Um, and yeah, we have the the diesel engine here. Very hard to work out. Murley's Bickerton and Day Limited. Can't see a date on this one. The run start, stop, lever, and then in the middle we have this ingenious, well, it sounds ingenious to someone in the 21st century clutch mechanism. So as the handle is wound, the clutch unit in the middle and transfers the power from the running diesel engine in to the oil pump. And diesel engines like this must really have have yeah, run the war effort, whether it was generating electricity, pumping fuel, heating, running equipment, machinery. But down the, some of the oil reservoirs here, which we did have a, a cheeky play earlier and there was some, some there, some residue of the oil left. Another another huge valve here. I hope you can see it looks like the flow was from, from our right to left. Down into what really is probably not a very pleasant pit to spend any time working in. Now the two of these tanks of these blue tanks. This one last it must have been in service and last tested, 1970. And these were for compressed air. And there were two compressors. 
just along the wall here. So here we have another compressed air tank. See one of these Hamworthy engineering compressors. There's two of those filling these tanks. And these two large green ventilation fan units are actually cooling units. So these would have effectively been the radiators for those huge diesel oil pumps. And if we look around the back, there's a little bit more information. A Heenan patent cooler. April 1940 was manufactured with the order number there in Worcester, England. So many other interesting features and accoutrements that are not, not often found in sites like this that are that are long abandoned. Five ton crane. Look. I have not been brave enough to try this. But judging by the condition of the rest of the site, I imagine it would still work. There's some other oil reservoirs up top in this gantry. We have some heating equipment. So I'm assuming these were these were possibly um, it, was, it seems to be heated oil was passed through these um, whether just for radiators to stop frost in the building or whether it was actually um, heating some of the oil in the system um, the warmer heavy oil is the more viscous it becomes the easier it is to pump so a lot of lot of large fuel tanks would have heaters in them. Manchester pressure gauges and this would have been pressure in the various parts of this pump system so if we look at the hoses we've got um, two on well, possibly the output valve one on the input valve here all disconnected now this tank I believe was a buffer so whenever the oil was being pumped um, this tank just has sort of almost in a, like an expansion tank probably um, we just meant so if there was a stoppage or a blockage um, further down the line that um, the pumps didn't back up and there were no, no bursts in the system there's a small latrine toilet in here which inevitably has been smashed Always seems to be the way. And then we have the interest some of these interesting parts cabinets. Looks like a very large piston. Some smaller parts and a thermometer. Oh, 
Well, that's it. Brief, but hopefully you find it as interesting as I did. A 1940s uh, fuel pumping station. And I will say, incredibly rare, and incredibly rare to have one in this condition. Um, I believe it is protected. I believe it is a um, grade one listed building. If it was an empty shell, there's no intrinsic heritage value. But the fact that the equipment remains, it absolutely retains its context. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully the audio is acceptable and the light, which given that this is a pitch black, pitch black room, um, hopefully the light has been, has been good enough. So if you like this, give it the usual thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you'd like to see more of this content, thank you.